Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises on the glory and to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushua by Hashem Rekakodash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, the Lord and God, God, and His name he remains, He exists. And Yahweh is His name is the only begotten Son, the Lord and God, Jesus Christ. And His name he remains, He delivers. By Hashem is in the name, Rekakodash, the Holy Spirit. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone as well. Peace and blessings unto this and shout from this push forward in the truth. To the four corners of the earth. I want to say shalom out to your brothers and keep pushing and a double shalom to the Israelites that's looking like the other nations and it's a shalom I want to say shalom out to your brothers and sisters as well. My name is the wife from Jimmy's Line St. Louis Camp. And I'll come back at another video. And I'm entitled this You Do Have a Woman, Single Brothers. Um, in, in uh, parentheses. Uh, Sophia. All right. So, yeah, Sophia is the Greek way of how you say wisdom. Okay. And what is the ultimate wisdom? These scriptures. Because this knowledge supersedes any and everything that's on this planet right now. And the Lord said that this knowledge according to the world is what? Foolishness. Okay. So foolishness. And but Lord is be edifying. And I get that scripture a little bit later, but I'm gonna start off with this. So this is Proverbs nine. And I'm gonna start at nine. And it reads, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will yet be wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Right? Because it goes into uh the fool. Okay, because the most high is in perfect balance. So the fool, he going to despise knowledge, but a wise man will increase in learning. Okay, and guess what? Learning hurts. It, it, it doesn't feel good. That's why the scripture says, much study is weariness of the flesh. Okay, you know, your eyes get tired from reading. Your mind is tired. Okay. Um, and learning is... A constant thing. You're always learning. You're always growing. Okay? You're always flowing. You're like water. Like uh, Bruce Lee said. He said, be like water, my friend. Okay? And water is the element that brings forth life. Everything has water in it. Okay? So this is um, the 10th verse. And it reads, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Right? So if you fear the Lord, that's the beginning of wisdom. Because you're applying knowledge. Because it's one thing to know something. And it's another thing to apply what you know. Because it's... And we didn't always seen it. Especially in Great Millstone. Like those guys. Got many examples of them. I'm not going to name them. But you know who they are. Um... A lot of guys in new scriptures that that was precept kings, they wasn't even applying like what they know. Okay. So um let's keep reading it says, For by me thy day shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself, but if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. Right? So, uh, kind. So, you got to take responsibility for your own actions. Okay? Because, you know, Jake, just do things instead of just thinking things through and learning from his mistake. Jake just found a new way to do wickedness. All right? And it don't work like that. That's why you see, like, a lot of Jakes, they lose their life by that type of thinking. Okay? Because that thinking is detrimental to life. Because Lord don't want you to to think like that hey that's a cancerous way of thinking okay yeah i'm gonna read it again if thou be wise thou should be wise for thyself right so you gotta think for yourself man okay you gotta learn how to rule your own spirit you know because a lot of people especially in this kingdom man and especially amongst us israelites 
The so-called white man, Esau Edom, he don't want you to be a free thinker. He don't want you to, to uh, be content. He constantly wants you in this subservient. I gotta, I gotta spend money. I gotta, I gotta get more women. I gotta get more cars. I gotta get more shoes. I gotta get more of this. I gotta get more of that. You know, and that's not the type of spirit that you're supposed to be in. I mean, it's only like how many pairs of shoes can you wear? You know, and how many women can you deal with? Okay, yeah, it's all vanity. All right. And I'm not hating on a brother that, that do deal with women. You know, hey, good for that brother. You know, more power to him. But that's not the reason why we're here. Okay, and that goes to the title of my video. Do you have a, uh, you do have a woman single brothers. Her name is Sophia. And it's wisdom. Okay, and if you got a physical woman in the flesh for your brothers out there, you got two women. You're you're already married to multiple women. <laughs> okay? So you got your spiritual woman and you got your physical woman that you deal with. Alright, but this woman right here, she ain't gonna never forsake you. Okay, which is wisdom. So this is uh Proverbs five and I'm gonna start at fifteen. And it reads it says, Drink waters out of thy own cistern, and run in, running waters out of thy own well. Let thy fountains be thy spurt dispersed abroad, and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thy own, and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as thy loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be thy ravished. Always with her love. All right, and this is talking about wisdom. And will and why will thou my son be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be withholding with the cords of his sin. He shall die without instruction in the gates. In the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray, right? Because uh, wisdom is referred to as a woman, right? Because you got um, the men of the Lord, the elect. It says they were not defiled with uh, women, okay? Because it's talking about uh, a strange woman, all right? And which is, goes into these other different philosophies, Okay, that's not a part of the scriptures. Okay, you got Jason's into Islam, Christianity. You got Jason Greek fraternities. You got Israelite women in sororities. You got Israelite women in city girls. You know, and you got Israelite men as city boys, all right? And that's not the type of mentality you're supposed to be in, man. You're not supposed to be in a city boy spirit. Okay? And um, you got to come out of that. All right. And again, I'm not hating on a brother that do have women. You know, it's not what I'm saying. If you have women, more power to you. But, you know, Jake just got to get out of that. Out of that. Out of that thirsty. That thirsty vagina spirit, man. But scriptures do say it, it'd be better to marry than to burn. All right, let's get that scripture real fast. So this is uh First Corinthians seven, and I'm starting eight. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide, even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. I right, see so it's better to marry. Yeah, if you. Are that super horny? All right, you want to get your rocks off? Hey, just find you a woman. Okay, there's plenty of them out here. Okay, but uh, Jake, you should be disciplined. All right, you should know like what's, what, what woman is good for you, what woman is not good for you. If you're just wasting time, you know, some brothers can be eunuchs, some brothers can't. You know, it's not a 
It's not a snapback. It's not a one size fit all. No. Okay, because each and every single one of us as individuals, which we all on the same wavelength. Okay, we have different spirits. We have different wants. We have different needs. We have different interests. We have different portions in the spirit. Okay, you got to figure out what your portion is. Okay. And um, I forgot what scripture I said I was going to get earlier. I said I was going to get a scripture earlier, but it slipped my mind. It's lucky out there, Akim. This is Psalms 1 and 1. Um, a very old, uh, underrated scripture. But it's the first uh, book of Psalms. So Psalms 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night, right? So we're not walking in the counsel of the ungodly, man. You know, because we are separate from these people. Okay, we, we separate from the people in the world. We separate from these heathens. We separate from the two-thirds of our own nation. You know, we don't do the same things that they do. We don't get linings. We don't um, commit adultery. We don't put tattoos on our body. Okay? Um, any other type of worldly things that Jake out there is doing, man. Because if you are doing those things, hey, you are not in the truth. <laughs> you are not holy. You are not sanctified. And sanctified means, means to be clean. If you're doing those things, you are not clean. All right? Verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his truth, his truth, his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, right? So kind, you know, you, you got to always be thinking about wisdom. Like everything you do, that's why you got the law of the phylacteries, okay? For you to remember uh, to do the law, but, you know, which we don't do that law no more. For you IUIC guys out there that's talking about they keeping the law. Where are your phylacteries at? <laughs> okay. So, uh, kind, you ain't keeping that law. You ain't even keeping the law of not lining up your head, like, let alone that law. <laughs> you know, Jake making it all about fringes. Okay? It says, The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Right? See, like chaffs. Okay, I think chaff is like, um, like after you get done um burning a fire okay like the ashes trash in effect let's see if I can find that so chapped uh chapped okay it says uh the husk of corn or seed separated by winnowing or threshing. Right? And this is another one. Um, so, refuse waste, garbage, litter, discard them out of debris, scrap, dross. Right? So, that's the definition that I'm looking for. So, worthless things. So, trash. Okay? Said, therefore, the ungodly should not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish, right? So the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Okay. So kind of, so he knows all our ways. All our ways. Whether we good or whether we evil, because the Lord controls all things. Okay, because I, I, we we coming into a time where um, 
it's just only going to be you and the knowledge that you have. You know, Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of that time. All right, so 1 Timothy 2. Maybe Second Timothy. Yep, and fifteen. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right. So you got to study to show yourself approved. Okay. So you have to study because if people come up and ask questions you got to be able to pull out these scriptures okay that's what it all boils now all right so the same way how Esau eat him you know you know he carried his gun on him and he lived by his sword you got to live by your sword which is what the the word of God okay because that's what your sword is your sword is the word of God and a spiritual sword cut way more deep than a spiritual, than a physical sword, so like you. So come. Proverbs 1 and 19. It says, um, 1 and 19. No. So like you. Um, I'm going to go to the book of Ecclesiastes 4 and 11. It says, Wisdom exalted her children and layeth hold of them that seek her. He that loveth her life and they that seek to her early shall be filled with joy. He that holdeth her fast shall inherit glory. And wheresoever she entered, the Lord will bless. Right? So, yeah, it's talking about wisdom. Because, yeah, wisdom... Um, you know, that's the principal thing. And matter of fact, yeah, I'm going to hop to... I remember that scripture at the Wadi Haba Shemi Osha. Remember that scripture that I was going to get? It says... Uh, actually, it didn't have it written down. So Revelation 14, and I'm going to start at 1. And lo, I, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads, right? Yehoah And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as a voice of a great thunder and I heard the voice of of harpers harping with their lamps and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth these are they which were not defiled women for they are virgins these are they which follow the lamb with us wherever he goeth these were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no gown, for they are without fault before the throne of Yahweh. Right? So, yeah, they are without fault. Okay? And, uh, yeah, these were not defiled women, for they are virgins. So, yeah, we're not getting into these other philosophies. The same way how you get into a woman and know her. The same concept of you getting into a woman and knowing her. A physical woman. And that's the number one way how you know a woman is through um, 
through the act of sex, you know, sensual, uh, intimate relationship. That's how you know a woman. Okay. And it's another scripture that I mentioned. That was First Corinthians. Yeah, three and nineteen. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Yahweh. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. All right. So he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. All right. They think that they're so smart. They're really um, making it more harder for themselves. Because it says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Okay. So you think you're so wise and you become a fool, man. You start to go left. Okay. You go so positive, you go left. You end up going left. All right. So let's go back to Sirach. Says verse fourteen, they that serve her shall minister to the holy one, and them that love her, the Lord doth love. Right. So if you love wisdom, the Lord love you. Okay. Verse fifteen. Whoso giveth ear unto her shall judge the nations, and he that attended unto her shall dwell securely. Right? So, yeah, because we all going to all sit upon thrones. Okay? Because right, the Lord says he's going to give us a ride over the nations. All right? If any man commit himself unto her, he shall inherit her, and his generation shall hold her in possession. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. Right? So so it's the same way how you chase in a woman. Okay, so yeah, she so called playing hard to get. Alright. Well she's just basically testing you to see how much you want her, right? And which I don't recommend your brothers do that with a physical woman, especially nowadays. Um, these women are playing too many games. I recommend that you do that with this woman because uh, you're going to get a benefit. You know, if you're really sincere and if you really love this woman, then, you know, she's going to allow you to come into her. All right. Metaphorically speaking. All right. Yeah. So for eight, verse 18. Then will she return the straight way unto him and comfort him and show him her secrets. Right? But if he go wrong, she will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. Observe the opportunity and beware of evil and be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul. Right? So, yeah. And yeah, many examples of men turning their back on the plow. And look at him now, bugged out. You know, some of them are sodomites. Some of them deal with transformers. Some of them went and got tattoos. Some of them got dreads now. Some of them just a regular family man. Okay? And no, man. Like, we are sons of the living power and we have a duty to do. There's nothing more important in this world than doing what we're doing now. Okay? But the Lord, he has to be working on you to uh, to see that. Okay. I see. Yeah, that was pretty much it on that. And I'm going to pull a few more scriptures. Then I'm going to close it up. So Philippians four and six. It said, "Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be known unto Yahweh." All right. So yeah, be careful, meaning be be not anxious. 
Okay? Because you got to let your request be known. Let's see how about Shmi Shai. Okay? How about Shmi Shai? Well, would give you the things that you ask for, especially if you ask for spiritual things. Will open up my understanding. Allow me to discern spirits. Okay, allow me to learn the Hebrew. Allow me to re uh, not regurgitate, but allow me to soak in this knowledge. Okay, so I can regurgitate whatever it is that I learn. Because yeah, re regurgitating is important too. You know, because you have to you have to meditate on the scriptures. You know, you can't just be a parrot. You have to actually study. All right. Revelation one and three, and it reads: Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand, right? So blessed is he that readeth. Okay? So yeah, reading. You have to read the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Alright, because you got many, many, many Christians that think that, yeah, I'm a I'ma read when I feel like it. As a matter of fact, I ain't gonna even read. I'ma just listen to what Pastor tell me and just regurgitate what he say. You know, and that's what Christians do. You don't want to be an unbelieving Christian because really, uh, men of the Lord, we the true Christians, but these so-called Christians, these fake Christians, okay? That's what they do, and we not like them. We the men of the Lord, so you got to act like it. So you have to be an expert in this truth, okay? Bible expert, at least is what you should be striving for. Should I know I am, you know, because I want to know everything, you know, and, and I still struggle with where scriptures is at. And you know, I'm in the flesh, but still, hey, you know, we want to remember them scriptures Matthew 6 and 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, which you shall eat, or what you shall drink. Know you for your body and what you should put on. Is not the life more than meat and the, uh, and the body than raiment? Right. So, kind of, so that's the type of mentality that you have. You know, when you are uh, going out to the streets and preach, that's pretty much the only reason why you're here is to help the body and to... Uh, you know, help yourself, seek out your own salvation and help the body. Because, yeah, hey, we are a body and we are all in the same accord. So you have to uh, help the body. At least is what a true man of the Lord would do is uh, help brothers, give brothers advice. You know, uh, put brothers on games about certain things, or even about women or whatever. Okay. So that's what the body would do. So kind, kind with us, that's all I had, and I want to say shalom.